Speaker for Saskatoon West. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I would like to thank the Parliamentary Secretary for being here this evening, but I am saddened to have to continue to speak up about this very important issue, and that issue is the need for safe, affordable public transportation in Saskatchewan. The previous Parliamentary Secretary said in a reply to my question in the House that having an efficient, functional transportation system is absolutely critical. In fact, I've heard a few different versions of this sentiment from several members of this government, from the Minister of Innovation. As the member knows full well, this is an issue that we are working on. We will work with her office to make sure we take the appropriate steps that are required and needed to address the issue in a meaningful way. How to explain then, Madam Speaker, that a recent order paper question I submitted asking for the list of any meetings or correspondence related to STC by officials at Innovation came back with a shocking answer. There have been zero meetings and no correspondence on this issue whatsoever. Why did the Minister of Innovation say what he said if, in fact, no work has been done? I believe the people of Saskatchewan deserve an explanation. Further, I heard from the Minister of Infrastructure and Communities. I can assure the member that I'm working with my Saskatchewan colleagues. We want to deliver for the people of Saskatchewan. There'll be good news coming. I can assure her that she can come to see me or the Minister of Public Safety and my colleagues. Well, Madam Speaker, I reached out that very same day to the Minister of Public Safety, the lone minister from Saskatchewan, for an urgent meeting. I have still not heard back. And I have certainly never been contact or contacted or approached by the Minister of Infrastructure and Communities on this issue, nor, nor heard from any of his departmental officials. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary will forgive me, perhaps, um, if I don't quite believe that this government is taking this issue seriously, despite what they say. In addition to my many questions in the House from both myself and my NDP colleagues, I've also written to various ministers about the loss of STC and the impact this has had on families across Saskatchewan, but especially people who live in northern and remote areas in terms of safety, affordability, access to medical and education services, the ability to connect with family members, as well as the barriers to being able to attend and participate in the only hearing held in Saskatchewan for the inquiry into missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls. In July of 2017, my colleague, the member for Destiny, Mississippi, Churchill River and I, wrote a joint letter to the Ministers of Indigenous Affairs, the Status of Women and Labour, asking them to coordinate an effective federal response to the concerns raised by a group of seven women organi women's organizations about the adverse effect of, ST of the STC shutdown. The Minister of Indigenous and Northern Affairs replied that she understood that the closure of the STC has had some effect on commuters, but that she also understood that Greyhound Canada continues to provide connections to communities. This cavalier, callous and out-of-touch out response is astonishing. Madam Speaker, especially now that we'll be facing an even deeper void when Greyhound Canada ends its operations in Western Canada as of October 31st. The issue of adequate transportation came up repeatedly during the ongoing inquiry into missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls. What the Minister and by extension this government fails to understand is that even with financial support to participate in the inquiry, people cannot move around the province without viable, safe, affordable transportation. What I fail to understand is why is this government won't do anything to help the people of Saskatchewan. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Madam Speaker, thank you, and I can't thank my Honourable Colleague enough for her very valid point, with which I wholeheartedly agree. Transportation affects the daily lives of people all across Canada, and we remain committed to providing travellers with a national transportation system that is safe, reliable, and continues to serve our communities. Our Transportation 2030 initiative was brought forward to provide just such a strategic plan for the future of transportation in Canada, which is a key focus of this initiative. And of course, this government has allocated historic proportions of resources to national transportation. To do so, Madam Speaker, we work cooperatively with the provinces and the municipalities. So it's a tripartite agreement wherein all three partners have either to contribute or to agree to fund the actual project at the local level. We recognize the difficulties that some travellers, including Indigenous peoples referred to by my honourable colleague, may have been facing since the withdrawal of intercity bus services 
by the Saskatchewan Transportation Company. Madam Speaker, I would like to take this opportunity and this time to encourage the Government of Saskatchewan to engage with the communities, including Indigenous communities, and different stakeholders, including the municipality, to promote the development of alternative transportation options that would meet the safe mobility needs of travellers. Madam Speaker, the Government of Canada stands ready to do its part. We look forward to moving this requirement forward to ease the legitimate concerns raised by my honourable colleague. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Honourable Member for Saskatoon West. Well, I want to thank my uh, honourable colleague uh, for his remarks. I do want to stress that I do believe the federal government needs to lead in this area, and we haven't seen any action, not moving the needle one bit. I would like to ask the Parliamentary Secretary at least to acknowledge that there is a role for the federal government in restoring crucial, not only intra-provincial, but inter-provincial transportation options for the people of Saskatchewan. Because the loss of STC, now of course Greyhound, is def it's definitely having a de disproportionate impact on women, places women's lives at risk, further isolates northern, rural, indigenous communities and places, unnecessarily places limitations on the mobility of seniors, people living with disabilities, people living in poverty, and those disenfranchised. I'd like to know how many more questions, how many more letters, how, what will it take to get this government to step up and help the people of Saskatchewan? Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Madam Speaker, we recognize the importance of having a national passenger transportation system that works for all people in Canada. We acknowledge the challenges faced by members of affected communities, including those of the Honourable Member, including especially Indigenous communities, as a result of the loss of provincial bus services in Saskatchewan. We are encouraged to see recent expressions of interest by some Canadian bus carriers that are using different business models and equipment to fill in some of the gaps. Again, I would like to encourage the Government of Saskatchewan to engage with municipalities, the communities, including Indigenous communities, and the various and different stakeholders to promote the development of alternative transportation options that would meet the safe mobility needs of the travellers. Thank you, Madam Speaker. 